Watkins, a historic figure whose name I did not know until recently. I had no idea that Anna Atkins was the first person to ever make and publish a book of photography. The work was her own and the book was self-published to much success and acclaim. Science was not a field that accepted women in the early 1800s, but Anna, whose father was a prominent scientist in England, found a loophole in botany. Botany was an accepted, popular, and encouraged interest for all genders at the time. A woman of good society, she was friendly with other scientists and artists like Henry Fox Talbot, who invented the salted paper and calotype photographic processes, as well as John Herschel, who invented the cyanotype. These relationships undoubtedly gave her access and insight to this new, exciting medium of photography. And in 1843, Anna embarked on a monumental project of documentation. Using her preserved plants as her subject, she created a series of images that she assembled into a book called British Algae, Cyanotype Impressions. I have never had an interest, candidly, in cyanotype, but when I discovered I could marry my love of this wonderful SX-70 and instant film with this earliest photographic process, I was hooked. And the rabbit hole of cyanotype did not disappoint. There was so much to learn. But speaking of learning, and before we get into this Andy Warhol-inspired Polaroid meets cyanotype project of mine, let's talk about the sponsor of this video, which is Skillshare. Being completely new to this photographic process, I was thrilled to find no less than 24 different classes about cyanotype on Skillshare. But I gravitated toward this class by Celia Cruz Sandoval called How to Create a Portrait in Cyanotype, which is exactly what I was looking to do. She gives you all the steps and tools to make actual digital images into cyanotypes, which is very cool. And if you have kids like me, it's a very fun process that gets them engaged okay. with both art and science. I'll be taking it a step further with my kids watching this class about cyanotype sketchbooks this summer so that they have something to physically remember their plants and shells and memories of the northern shores of California when we go on vacation shortly. And there's such a variety of things you can learn on Skillshare from photography, obviously, but graphic design, music, cooking, business, marketing, you name it, they have it. So if you're looking to pick up a new skill this summer, go to Skillshare to sign up now. The first 500 people to use the link in my description down below will receive one month free trial of Skillshare. So go ahead and get started today. I don't know, there's something about something armor that makes it look, makes the person look uh, uh, just right. It, it, it just t t takes their take shots. Around the time that I was discovering cyanotypes, I was also watching Andy Warhol Diaries on Netflix. I'd been longing to get back into instant film for a while, and after revisiting Warhol's Polaroids and screen prints, I landed on this idea for my project, which was Polaroid prints of my daughters transformed into cyanotype, then scanned, upsampled, and put on the wall as art. Ingredients you'll need. Cyanotype paper or cyanotype sensitizer kit for doing it yourself. A cheap frame with glass and some office clips. The cheaper the glass here, the better. So just go get the crappiest framing kit that you can. But you're also gonna want something that really secures it down. You're gonna want transparency film paper if you want to print your own negatives on the computer. A dish, or in my case, a kid's doctor's kit box for rinsing your prints a dimly lit room or a safe light, the sun or a UV lamp, and nice but not necessary, hydrogen peroxide and white vinegar. Now take a Polaroid and let that Polaroid develop for 15 minutes if it's black and white or 30 minutes if it's color, and then cut the transparency out by taking a blade to the bottom and sides of your Polaroid. I do recommend black and white Polaroids here just because they do tend to uh, replicate better on cyanotype paper. Once you have that Polaroid transparency, you're gonna wanna lay that onto your prepared paper and securely tighten that down so that the, the transparency is really Really well placed um, on the paper. If you don't do this, if you lay it just sort of gently on top with like a piece of transparency film on top, it just won't work 
as I learned a couple of times. I tried it various ways. It just did not work out. My best and most effective method was literally just using this picture I had in my daughter's bedroom of some horses that I shot in Iceland and just used that very cheap frame to press this down. Then take your cyanotype paper with the transparencies on top and lay that out under the sun or under a UV light for 8 to 15 minutes or until you see the paper around the transparency turn this like greenish silvery color. I did purchase a UV light because, you know, for someone like me who doesn't have a lot of time in the day, this is really nice because then I can develop at night. The UV lights can be purchased really cheap and you can travel with them. It's kind of fun. So I'll put links for all of this stuff down in the show notes below. So now you've developed your paper, you're going to remove the glass and the negatives from the paper and take your stuff to the sink. Maybe have all your stuff laid out like your hydrogen peroxide and your vinegar if you want to use those elements. You're gonna wash in water. I just washed in tap water. And then I poured some white vinegar in there which stops the developing process and just kind of speeds everything up. But you just sort of lightly agitate that in the tray for like five minutes. And then you're gonna move into a fresh water bath and just add some hydrogen peroxide. You will see it happen so quickly. So I just hand pour to the point where I'm like, oh, that looks like it's developing. But what that does is it oxidizes the cyanotype and makes it that deep, delicious blue much more quickly. Again, if you're impatient like me, it's a pro. And then you're gonna move it into one final fresh water bath and just let it soak for five minutes to get all the chemicals out and move that into a place to dry. Ideally, you're clipping it, hanging it to dry, but I just dried it, frankly, on like a towel in the bathroom. And I took that into my flatbed scanner, upscaled it in Lightroom, and then moved that file over to my husband's large format printer. And voila, it's a super fun, super artistic project that again is really great to get your kids involved in if they have any patience. I mean, trust me, trying to get pictures of my kids on this Polaroid camera was not easy. I'm trying to steal a Polaroid <laughs> before bed. But if they'll work with you, it's a wonderful place to, or way to memorialize them and then have this lovely bit of artwork on the walls. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you have any questions, drop comments down below. I will also link out some other videos that go more in depth on this. And again, Skillshare has all those awesome videos on their platform as well. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.